the transport bar in Studio One 3.3. Let's take a look at this. Uh, this should be not too long. The transport bar is fairly simple, but there's a lot of things here that maybe we just haven't paid attention to and uh, could be useful for working in our production mixing and what have you. First, we're just going to start from the left to the right. Uh, first little item is may seem very small, but if you've ever had m problems with your MIDI keyboard, uh, please pay attention to this little arrow there. If I press keys on my keyboard, you can see that that lights up. I'm sure most of you already know about that, but if you didn't, take a look at that whenever you're troubleshooting and just notice if that's working uh, first before you spend so much time maybe say working within the parameters of the VST instrument. Now uh, if we click on this area here we can then open up our MIDI monitor. This actually will display the messages that are being sent from our MIDI controller. So again if I press a key on my MIDI controller I'm gonna press uh, middle C. You can see that a note on and note off message were received. We've got the channel, port, and and the name of the actual the device. Uh, time, message. So there's information in here that could be useful for you if you're ever troubleshooting or just have an interest in learning more a bit about uh, MIDI. If we click these items here, so if I check the receive, that's going to just filter the messages. Uh, and then if I press the keys again, nothing's going to happen because receive I've activated that in the filter and it's going to filter those messages out at the bottom we can clear we can reconnect our MIDI device if it happened to have gotten disconnected um, and all notes off if we have a MIDI controller that's gone crazy sending messages we can hit that I'm going to uncheck this filter close out the next item that we have in the transport is the CPU and disk meter activity levels you can see here for some reason my CPU is jumping around a bit down there and we can click on the performance monitor and then see a larger display of our CPU and disk meters we've got cache here that will give you a readout of used in total if we could click on this wrench icon then we can show cache folder or clean up the cache we can choose to show any devices that are currently active. So actually, I'm going to close out real quick. F6, bring up the instruments, and I will load in a presence. Close that back down. Let's click on our performance monitor again. And as we can see, we can uh, take a look at presence and see what it's doing with our CPU latency. We can even right-click on that and rename favorite disable remove or show in the mix console we'll go ahead and close out of that monitor next in line we have the sample rate and we can just first it just displays what our song setup is for the sample rate we can also click once on this and access the song setup and then choose a different sample rate there I'll close out we then have our total plug-in delay readout we also have a readout for the song position cursor where its location is and we're at bar one if I press my space bar and move the cursor we can see that it follows along now because due to the resolution on my laptop it's a smaller screen so otherwise we would have a record max time showing here how much space we had available on our hard drive for recording and then also we, we would have a display for showing seconds, time in seconds. Now we can come and click on this bars area and then choose seconds, samples, bars, or frames below there. And as far as the resolution is concerned, apparently uh, if mine is set to 1366 by 768, and if you can get above that, then that's when these other items will show up. Now we can also click and change the position if we click once it will then change. We can also use our mouse wheel to alter the position and it also you could just hover over each one of these and navigate around there. If you need to do some fine editing this would be a good one here. Next we have our previous and next for our song markers. 
So if I, I'm going to F5 and close out of the browser and click here in the ruler and I'm going to press insert on my computer keyboard and insert a marker there. Click here and add one more. So then if I use these, I can access the different markers in my song here or in my empty document. And you can use the key command shift B to go to the previous marker and shift N to jump ahead. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these markers out and hide that marker track. Next we have fast forward and rewind here for our song position uh, cursor. You can also use the minus and plus keys on your numeric keypad to control that as well. Next we have the return to zero or the beginning of the track that you're working on. I'll hit spacebar just so you can know that you can use the decimal point on your numeric keypad and that will accomplish the same thing. Play and uh, stop and play. Okay, so spacebar will play. We can stop with the spacebar as well. Uh, enter on your numeric keypad will start play. Zero will also stop. If we press zero again on the numeric keypad, it's going to take us back to the position where we started. If I then press it a third time, it will go back to the very beginning of our track. We next have record here and we can also turn that on by using the asterisk on our numeric keypad. So pressing that, I'll space bar and stop, the decimal point on the numeric keypad to go back to the beginning. We then have loop and we can turn on and off our loop function if I actually had a loop set up. Um, and we're going to get ahead here, but I'm going to set my loop locators by pressing Alt and clicking in the ruler there, and then Option and setting the left locator. I should now be able to turn that loop function on and off. We can also use the forward slash on our keyboard to accomplish the same thing. Now we've got our left and right loop locator positions. We can also click on the L or R and clicking L will uh, move the song position cursor to the left locator. Clicking R will move it to the right locator. We can also change these positions. We just adjusted these by clicking down Alt and uh, while in the ruler section and moving in that way and then holding down control and adjusting the left locator. We can also come over and hover on this numerical display, use our mouse wheel and adjust this way. The further you go down, the finer the adjustments. Moving on, we have the record mode replace. And if we activate this, it will and say we're working on a loop or recording over material, it's going to just do away with what you have recorded. It will replace uh, any pre-existing material. And you can toggle that on and off by clicking here. Now the wrench here will open up the record panel. We then have pre-roll, auto punch, and we can activate these by clicking. The top one here, pre-roll, can also be turned on by pressing O on your keyboard. Auto punch below can be turned on by pressing I on your keyboard. Here we've got pre-count, which we can turn on and off by clicking or by holding down Shift and C. This other wrench that we have here will allow us to access the metronome setup and then here we can see we can adjust the bars, the number of bars that are, will be utilized if we're going to have pre-count or pre-roll. 
So we would then click and change the number of bars. And as you can see, whenever I activate, I check, they will activate down on the transport as well. And while we're here, just see that you have additional options for adjusting uh, the settings for your metronome. And that's what's next here, which uh, can be toggled on and off by clicking or by pressing C on our keyboard. Next, we've got our timing settings or key signature. And here we can click each number individually to adjust its setting. So if I'd like 3-4 time, I can just select like so. Now go ahead back to 4-4. Four, four. Now we have our tempo or beats per minute. I can just hover, hover over this numeric display and then use my mouse wheel to adjust. I could also click and type in a value manually. We now have level meters for our master volume as well as control for our master volume. I can hover over this section and use my wheel to decrease or increase. I could also just click in this display and raise it up or down. And next to that we have a icon in which we can toggle between solo I'm sorry, not solo, mono, and stereo for our master output. And this could be good for mastering. Um, from what I've read, I don't do much mastering, but from what I've read, it's good to listen to your master while it's in mono to be sure that everything still sounds as it should in that way. And I think that's about everything. Uh, the transport's kind of something that's not paid attention to a lot, but I think that there are some cool features here. And I hope that you found something useful in this video.